in usual market model we assume that the current price is the only determinant of the quantity demanded and quantity supplied however in the real world we can extend this analysis to the price expectations and their effect on the demand and supply functions in this series of videos we will develop the framework and then we will try to solve it to come up with some sort of of uh, solution and then we will uh, discuss its uh, possible cases and then finally we will um, try to solve it numerically so this is the first of the four um, videos that we have on this topic so here we will build the framework so this framework is to be built here and let us start with the very basic demand function the current price determines the current quantity demanded and the current price determines the current quantity supplied this is something that is the conventional wisdom and we have been talking about it however in real life as we already mentioned the trend of the price can affect the quantity demanded as well as quantity supplied and the trend uh, basically shows how the variables take place for example if the uh, price of land is there at a current point in time uh, we have a certain uh, quantity demanded for that however if the quantity demanded for uh, the price uh, tends to change over time that is it increases over time there will be an additional effect on the quantity demanded of land and how this change over time changes further is something that can further refine the speed of our response to the changes in the price so you see that there are three levels the first is the price then there is change in price over time and then there is the speed of change in price over time this is the original function this is the first derivative and this is the second derivative using which we can af uh, assess the effect of the uh, trends of the price over time on the quantity demanded and definitely on quantity supplied as well now how these two derivatives can exist here in the discrete form we have written this here we have the derivative form of it there are four possible cases uh, diagrammatically speaking if we consider this diagram we can see that there is a positive relationship and in this case we again have a positive relationship however the increase is uh, increasing over time here and here the increase is decreasing over time so the first derivative shows the slope and the second derivative shows the rate of change of the slope with this uh, curve we can see the rate of change of slope and with the second order derivative we can mathematically assess it since the rate of change of slope is increasing we have a positive value of the second derivative here the rate of change of slope is decreasing therefore we have a negative value of change of slope and then we have the rate of change of uh, slope in the third case and then the fourth case um, the first derivatives they are negative so you can guess that there will be a negative slope of the function and then there will be positive rate of change and negative rate of change if it is positive change uh, positive rate of change it means that the uh, decline in the price over time is getting faster and in this case the decline is getting slower we can visualize this with the help of these two diagrams here you can see that there is a negative slope here again there is a negative slope however the decrease uh, uh, decrease over time is decreasing over the, at an increasing rate so you can see that decrease is happening but the decline in this curve is actually showing that the decrease is increasing or decrease is at an increasing rate Conversely, if you can um, observe this uh, curve, which is having a sort of convex to origin shape, 
it is rising after this point it means that the decrease is happening because there is a negative slope however this is rising after a certain point it means that the decrease is declining or it is decreasing or at a decreasing rate so after understanding these four possible shapes of the uh, price function um, we can now consider that dp over dt shows the rate of change of price over time and this shows the that is this term shows the rate of change of price over time and if it is decreasing or increasing over time that is the slope of the rate of change of price now we can include these two terms that is the first derivative and second derivative to include the price trends and when we do this we have qd and we have qs this should be s and uh, primarily they are a function of the current price which is the conventional wisdom this usually happens but this is the uh, couple of factors that are showing the price trend the first term is the first order derivative and the second term is the second order derivative this shows the rate of change of price over time however this term shows the slope of the rate of change of price over time this again shows the slope of the rate of change of price over time so now it is an augmented function this is why we call it price expectation augmented demand and supply functions because we have augmented these demand supply functions with price expectations with the help of the first derivative and second derivative then uh, we have written them in an equation form because in the last step we wrote them in a functional form so this is the simple demand function this part of this and this part shows the effect of the price trends which in other words is the price expectations augmented part and this is the supply fu uh, function the simple or usual supply function which is showing the effect of the current price just like in the case of demand function however this shows the effect of the price trend on the supply function this is price expectation augmented part of the overall function we know about the parametric restrictions of alpha and beta and delta and gamma so alpha beta delta gamma are the conventional parameters we know about them however these are the new parameters that we can see here which were not present before price expectations in demand function only and not in the supply function so this is a assumption that we are making though it, it seems like a naive assumption because uh, suppliers also tend to have uh, you know expectations however we are assuming that um, only buyers have price expectations in this case for the sake of simplicity whereas we can also consider that suppliers have expectations so if buyers have uh, price expectations these coefficients should be non zero and what will be the effect of these um, um, coefficients let us see in this we can see that if m is a positive value quantity demanded will increase as the buyer is expecting the price to increase over time so this is the rate of change of price and if the coefficient is positive it means that the rate of change of price is having a positive relation with the quantity demanded it means that when the um, uh, you know the consumer is expecting that the price will increase over time and definitely the relationship would be uh, accordingly that is and he will consider it to buy a cheap to buy it now because it seems cheaper right now since he is expecting the price to change in the future that is increase in the future so it is better for him to purchase currently and hence the quantity demanded will increase so the relationship would be positive 
now let's talk about this n this uh, uh, coefficient it if it is positive then the quantity demanded will increase even faster as the rate of price increase is increasing over time since it is the rate of change of the rate of change of price so if the coefficient is positive that is n it means that the effect is positive and that would be that the consumer is expecting that the price will increase at a rate which is getting higher as the time is passing so there is a sense of urgency and he will increase the quantity demanded even faster because it seems as if the prices are increasing over time and that increases and that increase in price is increasing as we go ahead so a more meticulous analysis here is done uh, with the help of the second derivative and its coefficient n now um, we can uh, talk about the supply function as we have talked about the demand function here we have done some simplification by assuming that suppliers do not have any price expectations for that we can equate u and w to zero so that the derivative terms they disappear from the equation and then we come back to the usual demand uh, supply function so now this is the framework that we have built at this stage so we are successful in building the framework we have qd and qs definitely in the next step we should equate them however it will be done in the next part of the video till now we have just uh, developed the framework by understanding the real life logic and uh, justification of um, inclusion of price expectations in the usual market model thank you